Hollywood. Hey, what's up, man? Hollywood. Glad I got this heat on up in here. Hey, welcome <laughs> to another great episode of Five Minutes with Five, where I came down here to Hollywood cutting up barbershop, man. And I come to talk back to my bro, Hollywood. Come on, man. man. You know me. I'm in the building. I'm what's, always. What's going on, man? Life. See, it's a new year. Just trying to get it. Do what you got to do. Hey, do a favor. Tell the people a little bit about yourself real quick, and then we'll jump into this thing, man. All right. What's up, everybody? You know who it is. Hollywood. Goddamn, yes, Lord. Your favorite reality star from New Orleans all the way to Texas, babe. You know what it is here at Hollywood cutting up. Representing everywhere I go. Hey man, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to it, man. So Talk to me, G. A lot of people see you on TV. They see what you do. You handle your business like that. Uh, but I don't know. Has anybody ever come to you and do a podcast inside of your your, your barbershop? I'm not saying you talk about it online and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, they they asked too, but mm -hmm. you know, it didn't go through yet. Uh, like they wanted to, right? You know, but it didn't it didn't happen yet. So. Okay, okay, good. Cool. Well, shit, what? Goddamn. Shout out to them, G5. G5 got I the school, that. so that's you, what I do. You Bye. know what? You, you, you started <laughs> off, man. Everything, I ain't gonna lie, since the first time I met you, man, right. it's been genuine, you know? Mm. And just being around somebody so positive, you know? I, I ain't really, that. you know, somebody always negative. Right. Everywhere you go, there's negative. But being around you, man, you just lift everybody's spirits, man. So I just want to just say thank you man, again for that, man. Every time you. I talk to you, I just be smiling and get out the phone because I hey, know I, something good about to happen. I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> it, man. Well, we're going to kind of dive into it a little bit, whatever. Um, we already know, you know what I'm saying, because um, you was on the show before, previously. Mm -hmm. um, you're from New Orleans. Yeah. You're saying you, you're from the N.O. out there. Which ward is that? Ninth seven ward? Seven ward. I be tanning ward. Well, I'm a four Cause seven I, cause nine Because I, I talk to so many different people, different different wards or whatever, so that's why I be getting numbers. You gotta, my yeah, mind. you gotta understand four ward. So, so how's that broken down? So, I'm, I'm, my mom from the four ward Iverville okay. projects. Okay. So I was born in the Fort Wall Iverville project with my mom and my daddy was in the Seven Wall St. Bernard project. Uh -huh. You know, so shout out to your pops, man. He cool as yeah, a fan, man. man. You know what I'm hey. saying? I officially got to meet him at the <laughs> wedding, man, and um, I tell you, yeah, cool brother. Yeah, cool smart brother. That's my smart. best friend, man. Cool brother, man. Best friend and frat brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see y'all throwing <laughs> them hooks up and everything like that all the yeah, time. Yeah, man. You know, so you say it, so it's, it's broken down. Into it, different areas. So, and so it's a ward like a parish, It's a project, like a yeah. Like it's projects. When you say four oh. wall, seven wall, nine wall, everybody had a project. Third wall, Magnolia project, okay. Cali, your project. So every every ward had a project in it. Okay, yeah. So, okay. And, and not just that, the area. You know what I'm saying? Like right. the area around it. Because okay. where I stayed in the four wall area projects, we still had Charity Hospital where I was born, okay. where me and LeWayne was born in the same okay. hospital. Shout out to Weezy. Yeah, so it's, it's that whole area in your ward, uh, you know, so. Okay, so so what was it like growing up as Hollywood, man? Like, what was that like? I mean, you hear things about New Orleans and how things were, whatever. What was it like for you? I ain't gonna lie, it was fun, man. I grew up in the 80s. I, it was, mm. it was, I've been playing football since I was four. Okay. Right? Right. So I've been around a number of sports and watching drug dealers. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. So it was a good combination. Right. You know, my dad was one of the biggest drug dealers in New Orleans, mm. in Louisiana at one point. Right. So, you know, even though we had like a little house on the prairie, but we still had the best things. Okay. Like they had people around us who had better houses, but right. our the insides was better than they. Everybody mm. used to come to our house. But growing up in New Orleans, man, it was scary. Right. It was fun at the same time. And I'm just thank God that I made it to the age that I am, mm. being from a dangerous place like that, you right. know? Okay, so, so. so the thing I really want to kind of get into is this right here. You know, um, being in the entertainment world, in the entertainment industry as far as the things that you see from the time you first entered it to where we at kind of now because we see a lot of things in the news right now people not get paid and mm -hmm. the money they should get paid and stuff like that how does that make you look at the entertainment industry at first when i heard about it it was like damn you know these people is really big in the industry i was thought there was million like getting right. popped off right but sometimes when you love some stuff it don't it don't matter about the money sometimes. Mm -hmm. You ever thought about that? Because okay. I've been like I said, I wish I could be in the NFL right now. Okay. I was supposed to be in the NFL right now. And mm -hmm. if they call me today and say, Hey, you know, they get millions. Right. But if you wanna come play in the NFL, we'll pay you this much, you know. Right. 
I loved it that much to where I probably would have played it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then later on, if they saw how good I was, then yes, right. I would love an increase. Right. But for them not to get paid and me being what I do as far as reality shows and trying to be on these other TV shows and movies, mm. you know, as long as I could provide for my family, right. I ain't out here struggling, it really wouldn't have mattered to me. Mm. You know, but yeah, I, I, I feel it though as far as like Taraji, she's big in the game. Okay. I would have thought she'd been making millions each show, each right. movie, but she wasn't. Mm. So she must have been liking it to, to stay there to still get the money that she was getting. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Right. And sometimes people do things, like when I was working at the railroad. Yeah. I, and, and people don't know that about you. Yeah, I, know I you drive um, trains. The engineer yeah. person. Yeah, that I, I, on trains. I used to be on the trains, man. Right. I, I still got my certification. Right. See, people didn't know. When I was out there, I listened to all the old, I was one of the youngest ones, so I used to listen to the old school dudes. And what I found out was, when you work in the railroad, you get paid good, right? Oh yeah. So they was buying boats and and jet skis and Mm -hmm. four wheelers. See, I know how to spend my money. Thank God, you know, I know how to spend my money. So when I, they used to have to stay on the railroad to continue making that Uh big money. You get what I'm saying? Right. See, I don't spend like that. So. What I was saying with these actors, they buy these mansions and houses and cars and buying everybody else's cars, so they might have to stay there to keep on working to make right. that little change they was making to mm-hmm. stay afloat. Uh, you get what I'm saying? I got it. I got it. I got it. I, I see. I see. I definitely see that. Now you talk about football, because um, you you love football, man. You like one of the top guys in them Louisiana. I at was. One point, I, you know I was. I, you know and. Um, you went off to U of H mm-hmm. and did your thing like that. So why why didn't you go to the NFL? What what happened? Honestly, I, I why do you feel that? No no no. I, I I I like telling the story. I really don't mm-hmm. care about what I say. People know I say what's on my mind. So I felt like I chose the wrong school. Okay, got it. A lot of people tell me to this day I was ahead of my time. The the people that y'all watching in the NFL and in these college games that run the option or can run and throw, I was that right. guy. Okay. And I felt like I went to U of H because they used to be on TV, and I felt like if mm. people saw me on TV, I could make it to the NFL. When okay, I got to U of H, I was supposed to be the first black quarterback since Andre Ware. And when I everybody saw me out there, I was killing it at the scrimmage games. Everybody was excited. How the world about to be the quarterback? Game started, didn't stop me for the first three games at quarterback, mm. right? Right. I'm in the, and we losing. So I'm in the meetings asking, why I'm not the starting quarterback when I'm right. the best player on this team. You know I got the trophy at University of Houston. University of Houston give one trophy a year to the best person in your sport, meaning that from volleyball, soccer, swim, tennis, badminton, whatever sport, right. they get everybody go into this one um, Hilton Hotel and we have one big... Um, banquet, like sports banquet. Yeah, one big banquet, sports yeah. banquet, and yeah. they get one trophy to a person who's the best person at their sport. Mm. You know I got it, right? Oh, for yeah, real? I got it. I, I, I got it. Man, yeah, that's why I, I, when I talk to you, people know, man. If he say that it's real, I don't speak nothing but Hollywood facts. I be straight up, like, I, I, I seen the pictures. You can post it if you want right. to. And and uh, Antoine Smith gave it to me. He was the running back for the Patriots at the time. He went to U of H, but he presented it to me. But right. I got the trophy for being the best player at in my at sports mm-hmm. in my position right. out every sport at University of Houston. Yeah. So to answer your question, the reason why I felt I did go to Arena Football for three years. Okay, but three the, years. Yeah. Okay. Man, how was that? How was uh, that? I was the MVP of the year. But, uh, but how was that like? It was amazing. You know? I got two championship rings. Okay. I, yeah, I was the MVP. I was the post. I'm on the poster, so I, it felt you, good. What, what position play? I was receiving kickoff return. Okay. Yeah. So at U of H, why you asked me to deny I didn't make it to the NFL was mm-hmm. because I felt like I chose the wrong school. And then like my junior and senior year, right. my dad knew Doug Williams from Grambling. Right. He was the head coach. Doug heard I was leaving. My dad, he begged my dad for me to come be the starting quarterback for Grambling mm-hmm. State. And I was like, I felt like, and I should have did it, I felt like the swag was, was literally compared to Division I, right. you know? So it's just that's why I feel like I didn't make the NFL. I didn't I didn't choose right. the right uh, team. Hey, give me give me give me uh, five ten minutes. So um, I felt like choosing that school was my a bad choice. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And when I say I was ahead of my time was because I was the best option quarterback in the state of Louisiana. And when right. the stuff that I was doing on the field in college. Right. 
is what they banned from me to do. They said, when I asked them why I wasn't starting, they said, because when I got in the game, I did what I wanted to do. Uh, but what I was doing was working. Right. But no lie, I, I, no racism here. It was because I had all white coaches. Okay. You know, the coaches was white. And they right. were, even though they recruited me, they came to the hood to get me. But when I get on that field, it's another level. And right. the way that you see all these players play, like, um, I would, they labeled me the, the Michael Vick when I got, right. I was like Michael Vick. Right. Exactly, left-handed and everything. But they didn't, they wasn't, the white coaches wasn't used, they were so used to just white boys throwing, throwing, you know, the white boy quarterbacks. And that's serious, I'm serious. And I felt like it did have let me unleash the beast on the field as let me, because when we got in the, when I played in the scrimmage games, right. they had me with the second and third defense, offense. Me was the starting quarterback with the second and third team offense playing against the first defense, and we scored every time. Right. If it was from me running it or throwing it. Right. And they had the white boy starting mm -hmm. with the starting team right. with the second and third defense, and they would never scored. Mm. So it was like I got in there and I did what I needed to do. But guess what happened? Years later, we got a black coach, and he had got a black quarterback, right. Andre Ward. Go look him up. Played just like me went to multiple conference championships with U of right. H. So you see what I'm saying? I was, I've been doing Just that. Just ahead of your time. I was no, ahead of my time. And, and when I go, when I go places, people still to this day be like, man, right. we love watching you, you know? We okay. love watching you play. Okay, that, that's cool right there. So as far as, how did you get into having a barbershop, bro? I mean, that's where we at right now. We at Hollywood cutting up right now. Man. Like, how did that even transpire? Because this that's gonna lead into a whole bunch of other things I got to ask you and things that you do out here. Yeah, you know I, the barbershop. Yeah. So me being fresh and cool looking, you okay. dig every week. Yeah. I, I used to go get my hair lined on Wednesdays and a mm. haircut on Saturdays. I okay. stayed fresh on. And no, every ever since I was little, my mom used to dress me up in the sail sucker ass outfits. You right. know what I'm saying? So I, my mama made sure that I look good and mm. you know so right. i used to get a haircut on a line on wednesday a haircut on saturdays mm -hmm. so i was working for this restaurant called gringo's okay uh gringo's was a mexican restaurant i was the supervisor and mm -hmm. how i started working that was because the owner when hurricane katrina came the owner had put my family in the house for a year straight okay and he came to every one of my football games at u of h and arena his name was russell yubara so Mr. Russell had put my family in the house for a year straight in Pearland, and I told him, and they, when he came to my games, I had finished football, and he hit me up one day and said, what you doing, Hollywood, what's your life? I said, I'm just cooling. So I was really working on the railroad. So he said, uh, and I said, I don't like it. So he was like, how much you make? And I told him. He said, everybody love you at my restaurant. If you come work for the restaurant, I'll pay you the same thing. Ooh. All you gotta do is walk around and be yourself. Ooh. So I was like, she, that's easy work. But I started working for the company about two years in, man. I was like, man, everybody loved me here. They love how people used to come to this restaurant just to sit down and right. talk to me. Mm -hmm. But I, I was like, I'm making these people happy, but I'm not happy. Mm. I'm smiling with these people right. when they talk to me. But in my head, I'm like, man, get the get away from right. me. Like, I don't feel like, you know, but I said, what can I do to make myself happy, man? I got a degree in business, a minor psychology. So I was like, I could open up a barbershop. Why open up how? I went to maybe 23 barbershops, maybe 25 right. barbershops in Houston. And I should just go in the shop and say, hey man, if it was an empty chair, I'd be like, how much is this for boot rental? Cause they thought I cut hair. They'd tell me how much it was. I looked around, seen what I, you know, what they had in there. And I say, I went to this location and I got the biggest location for the cheapest price in this area, right? right. So I put in 10 chairs and I say, if I charge these barbers this much, I can make this much money pay the rent, lights, cable, everything, and still have beaucoup money in my pocket right. for the next two weeks, you know, because I make them pay me once a week, you know? So how I started the barbershop, I said, shit, I get a haircut, I know about it, it's easy, you know? So I made sure I could open up my first business to where I don't even have to be here. I don't right. cut hair, right? you know, but I still get paid every week and I don't even have to be here. Right. So I was like, why would I kill myself working for somebody when I can have my own business. Exactly. And I, and I make it exciting for everybody that come in here. I shake everybody's hand. Everybody mm -hmm. know me when they walk in. Right. I got free pool table, video games, punching bags, had right. Dave and Busters. You know, I make it nice for the people that come in here. No, you definitely do. Um, I want to highlight something that I see you do, and I've seen you do since I've known you. 
You do a lot of stuff for the community. I you do. do a lot of stuff for kids, man. You know, I mean, a lot of stuff. And no, that's besides, you know, haircuts and stuff like that. Bro, you be donating time, money, things, man. Talk about some of those efforts and things that you do for them. You, you know, you let on brag about that type of stuff. Bragging, no, 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 that's, no, that's, that's bragging, what I'm saying. Bro, so you ask the question because yeah. you see. So me, I always do things, you know, because God going to bless me regardless. So... I do do a lot for the community. I even got a trophy. I got an uh, award last year for being one of the most influential um, people in Houston. Right. It's nice, too. I appreciate it. I ain't think people see you, but they watching. Remember that. When you think people ain't watching, they watching. Oh, they always watching. They now. always watching, and they ready for you to fall, too. <laughs> but, yeah, I do a lot for the kids, man. I um, right. feed the homeless, um, and I do it with my frat brothers also. So what I did was I found out when they do it, and then I do it on my own also, so I can do double double right. the, um, community service. Uh, give all the kids. You saw you. Uh, was you here when I gave a hundred backpacks to the kids? No, I didn't come. I didn't catch that one. Uh, shout out to Kip. Kip, me and Kip got together. The Kip, you know, who Kip yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Kip is big yeah. in Houston. We gave away a hundred backpacks, crayons, everything that a kid needs. Everything. And you know the sad part about it is, bro, you give away free stuff right. and people. Your own people don't show up. It be people that mm. don't even know you come and show up. Bro, I gave away 100 backpacks, and it was probably two people that I knew. My right. partner Treats came mm -hmm. with his kids, and my other partner KD with his kids. Mm. All the people I know, dog, that's why I don't really mess with a lot of people no more, bro. Right. I really don't. But people that don't even know you will support you more than people that know you sometimes. And yeah. that's sad, bro. Wait, well, they said that, they said that in any business, though. They say that in any business or any personal endeavor, they say that it's the strangers that are going to do it. And it's always been that way. It's sad. And that's, and that's what it's everybody sad. Does. You know, and that's not even about um, people's friends, family. It has nothing to do with that. That's just the way it is. And it's always been that way, mm -hmm. like forever. You know, and, um, and so I even try to tell people, don't get caught up in worrying about people you know supporting what you're doing because... If you, if you do, you. you're gonna be feeling bad. You already know. So it's know. best to just don't even don't even count them in the equation. Yeah. And your strategy should be for everybody outside of your circle anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, know. I I know a lot of people, man, and it's sad that the people that you know it, it's just sad, bro. But well, sometimes we'll care more than people care. That's what it is. Yeah, that's in what a lot it of, is. A lot of cases, right? The, people don't understand sometimes the loyalty that or the friendship that we present to them. Mm -hmm. They don't understand it, you know, and know it's a, a real genuine thing. And so, it, and it's just me, bro. And I guess it doesn't bother me because I don't expect anybody to do what I do for somebody. Yeah, that's so I, I, mean. I don't have any, you know. So somebody didn't do something, it, it won't bother me. Yeah, that's because why I, I already know you can't outdo me. Yeah, like in relationships, I, I used to have to be. One, I used to get mad at chicks, you know, because I felt like, right, you know. They didn't think like me. That's why I used to get upset. So I'd be like, right. they don't think like me. So how can I expect somebody, you know? So yeah, you're right about that. But yeah, man, I do a lot in the community. I give away clothes, I buy shoes and give away shoes also. I have 150 pair of shoes and I went through my closet one day and I'm like, bruh, I ain't gonna be the one. <laughs> I know that's right. I like, bro. I, I don't know what you're doing to wear 150 man, pair of shoes, man. What I did that was. might have had when I was in school or something, but other than that. You yeah, know, but like, you know, please. I see a pair of shoes I like and I'm like, oh, I can wear it with the shirt I have. Right and never wear the clothes. Mm. So I actually give away my clothes, shirts, right. I go buy stuff. And like I said, I do a lot, I do, I do, do a lot, man. I right. do, I get, you know, I already know I get free haircuts to the kids for back right. to school. Mm -hmm. um, it's just whatever, whatever I feel, whatever God right. put in my path. And I, I, I like, be, I like to be the giver. Right. You know, I don't like to be, I don't want to be the, the I don't want to be the <laughs> borrower, I want to be the lender, right. you know what I'm saying? So. I just feel like God going to bless me, whatever. It's going to come to me, and I'm going to give it back. Mm -hmm. Well, you got married this year, man. I did. You know what I'm saying? Well, last birthday. year. My bad, last yeah. year. You got married. 2023. 2023. September 15, on my birthday. Ain't that some stuff, man. bro? Now you know. That was the only date they had available. Well, I mean, ain't that you, some you stuff? can never forget your anniversary. That's what they Yeah, I ain't going to forget that. I always say that. You always win. I'm, I'm sure. I don't know if she's happy that it was on that day or not. She, she might, she happy. Mm. She, I ain't gonna lie, when I first met her, she don't care if it was the next day. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah, okay. she didn't care if it, we got married two days after right. we met. She been waiting for that, bro. I ain't gonna no. <laughs> she been, she been waiting for it. So, um, uh, but I noticed y'all jumped off a, a podcast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't care if got a podcast out yeah. here. You know what I'm saying? You're doing that thing right there. 
Um, it's some secret stuff. It ain't secret stuff. It's some stuff you got coming up. You know what I'm saying? That I know about. That anybody y'all ain't gonna know about. Y'all just gonna mm-hmm. see what's going on with that stuff like that. But like, what what is in store for Hollywood? Like really? Like like what do you want to do within the next two years, and what do you want to do within the next five years? You know what, G? We can we can make plans for anything. Mm-hmm. It's good to write a vision down and stick right. with it. But I've noticed. You ever been with somebody? And, and uh, you ever been with a chick and she and you ask her what you what you gonna be in the next five what you gonna do with with the next five years and right. she tell you your dreams or her dreams mm. or you told her something and right. it never happened. Mm. I, I really don't. Me, I'm not gonna lie, G. I don't I don't make things for years to come. Okay. I don't. First of all, we don't know how long we gonna be here. Exactly. And I've been a, a testing to this. I told you two of my barbers wives just passed away in the same month of cancer. Mm. They didn't never think. They didn't even know they had it. Right. So I don't say where Hollywood going to be in the next two to five years. I say whatever God for me, sky's the limit. It really is. I just need him to open up all these doors that no man can shut. Right. Whether it's from the reality show. Um, well, I guess I should have framed it different. I, I was saying, like, what is it that you want to do in the next two years? Shit, I want to do, do a lot. What do you want to do in the next five? Yeah, I want... You know, I, just probably some upcoming projects that you want to yeah, do. Yeah, I want to like shoot the, the, the barbershop. Right. YouTube or the barbershop and shop it to the major networks. Right. You know, they, they actually been waiting for us, G. They've been mm. really waiting for something right. from me. Right. Me, I wasn't procrastinating. I had big stuff happening up and, you know, my wedding was, was right. coming. So I had to push back a few things. But mm-hmm. I do want to do the reality show. I do want to sell a million beard oils. Right. You know, I want to sell my beard. Oh, I got one of the best products. Yeah, you do it. You I, do, it I do. Because we talked about it on the, on the last show you was on. Yeah, I got, you know. I got the best scents. I got the cotton candy, the bubble gum. Mm-hmm. If you want your face to smell like a tree bark, we got that. <laughs> I hate that smell. I'm telling you, bro. When I first started doing beard, oh, right. dog, I was I was putting it on my face. Right. And I was like, I kept sniffing around like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Face smelling like a tree. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, what is this? So I say, I'm going to stop getting, you know, that stuff. I'm going to make my own. And came out with my own. And it's the best product out, bro. And it's, it's like I tell you, it don't take much to show love to black business owners, mm-hmm. to black. And, and I don't hit people over there. People keep right. telling me, why are you selling it for so cheap? I be like, bro, I just want people to buy it. Right. But you got to know your work. You really got to put your price on it that you know that it's worth. Right. Because if they're going to get it, they're going to get it regardless. And that's the thing about that. They're going to get it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, what I want to do is do this reality show. Mm-hmm. I also want to sell a million bottles of that. Right. Because if you sell a million bottles of this at $12, so that's it. You do the math. Right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> that's easy, easy math right there. <laughs> yeah, I also want to continue spreading man. the word of God. Just let him, let everybody know how good he is, right. man. You know, I, I tell people all the time, even in the bad, tough times, you know, I always tell people how great God is, mm-hmm. man. You know, every day, people see me all the time in the store. Man, we went to the store today, out of, and I was in the store for 20 minutes, bro. Right. I might have stopped, got stopped seven times to take a picture or just to talk. Mm-hmm. And people say the same thing. Oh, my God, you're so genuine, man. Right. We, Listen to me, man. When God anoints you with a blessing, bro, there's no way that it can be held back. You know, you meet different people. You got a person that know, think they know too much. Right. You know, you be <laughs> like, oh, I don't want to be a running person. Every time I say I saw <laughs> I saw a, a, a pink dog, he yeah, said, I saw two pink that's dogs. Right. They gonna one. You know, yeah, they all, they you got one. that person. You got a, a, a person that lie a lot. Mm. You got a person that don't talk to people when right. you're in public. You know, like, it's certain exactly. people, but I feel like God really... I, I, I tell people all the time, I'm, I'm God's second favorite son. Right. I feel like he anointed me, man, for real. Even when things bad happen, I still thank him. I don't wait until it happened and say, oh, I need you, God. Right. And I don't wait. I tell. Let me tell y'all something that's funny. I don't tell God, you know how some people say, use me, God, to, you know, I, I say, God, I don't want to be used. Right. Why? Because why would I want God to hurt me? to come back to tell people how how, how he healed me. I want to stay healed. Right. So I tell God, you ain't got to make me an example. Don't make me an example. You don't need no trials. No, I don't want no trials, God. I'm good. You dig? I don't want no no examples. I don't want no samples, no trials. Keep me as I am. You, you know what? And this is something that can definitely attest to your character. And, and it's me dealing with you for the past, you know what I'm saying, a couple of years, a few years. Um, 
I think you're a very humble guy. Man, you know what I'm saying? You. 100%. And um, because one, I don't deal with a lot of people. I don't deal with a lot of personalities. Like people that got, if people got a stank personality.